and welcome to We Never Met, the podcast where I talk to interesting strangers every week. Today <laughs> we have an interesting stranger, um, Eric. How you doing, man? Doing well. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So you, first of all, I mean, you do like uh, 800 things, it seems like. Yeah, that's that's probably pretty accurate. <laughs> I mean, close to that, though. Yeah. It has to be. Um because you have your own business now, um, you are a streamer, you mm-hmm. do that. Um, you have a podcast now as well, which I think is under your business too. Yep, yep. Um, but so first of all, I guess, just give give everyone kind of a summary of like what you do on a daily basis. Yeah, so I am co-founder of Urban Misfit Ventures, which is the umbrella company of currently IEEG and MK Misfits. I'm sure by the time this episode releases, then we will have announced our Strange on Purpose Studios, which is going to be our podcast studio as well. So nice. if you can come in, rent it out, we're going to kind of host some quirky, weird podcasts underneath that yeah. umbrella. But essentially, it's an umbrella that holds those three entities. So all of us are kind of all over the place because, you know, maybe we're pushing an event like we're about to announce a few events happening in May and, and June, I believe. So then there's that. And then, okay, all of our client work, which is our agency side of IEEG, yeah, yeah. which is you know, the admirals, moral code, stuff like that. So yeah. all of that content that gets for clients. And then uh, Stranger Purpose Studios will be our podcast umbrella. And that's so and that'll much be fun stuff. too. So, and, and that's just on the surface, you know, there's all sorts of oh, I know. Yeah. miniature things that go on underneath those yet. So because you're, you're young. How old are you? 25. 25. You're younger than me. Um, <laughs> and people always still comment about how young I am. Right. So like when you first started your business and like going down this route was that something that you had to like overcome was like an age thing yeah i never once thought age was an issue because yeah. like for me it was never age never dictated for me how good or bad i was at something right and i think even 50 year olds that start businesses for the first time have a lot to learn and do learn a lot right yeah. so like there's always something that people are learning no matter what age you are so for me and for all of us i mean i'm the oldest at 25 you know within the company oh, really? so yeah so age is not really an issue for us and we don't intentionally hire young we don't intentionally yeah. not hire older it's just we find the right fit culture wise most importantly right and then we know that we all have a lot to learn so we're okay teaching people that come in mm. how it how to work within our idea sure. and, and how can we help them grow yeah. within that so that we can help them grow more importantly, but then they can learn those skills and apply that to what we do. Right. And I, like for me, I think the the hardest thing would be like, I guess, st- st- even just starting this. So like where, where did the initial idea come from to pursue this with the people that you did? Yeah, so Q initially was the one that had the idea, and he had tried it with a few other people in the past, but it just kind of dissolved. It didn't really mm-hmm. work out like he had hoped. So he kind of was just doing LinkedIn consulting, things like that, under his own company that he ran. And then he had the idea, followed me on Twitter for a while, and we met at a networking event nearby, and, and okay. he was like, let's sit down, let's talk. I've been following you for a while. I have this idea. So then we sat down, and I just, I just told him yesterday, I said, uh, you know, there's no way that without your kindness, your grace, that we would be here today because what we sat down and talked about, there's no way that he couldn't have and shouldn't have charged me for that time. And there's no way I would have said, okay, because I didn't have that money (laughs) at the time. So I am always grateful for that because that, you know, led us to this point. And, you know, within that, we found Brema and we actually hired Brema to do video for Q and I at the time. And Q and I were like, let's He's really good, and we really yeah. like him. Let's let's bring him on too. Yeah. I'll need a little help shooting, you know, every yeah. so often. And then he knew Izzy from college, and he's like, "Listen, we got to sell too, right? So let's bring yeah. on Izzy. He sells, you know, catch up to people with white gloves and all that. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, and here we are. So it's the four of us. We're now a team of twelve, and wow, everybody's just as much a part of the team as the next. Yeah, because that it's it's just crazy that it's it all kind of happened so it seems like quickly. Yeah. Um. Before that though, or maybe the, this is even during. You are very like big on LinkedIn video specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, was that a conscious choice for you to like start there? So that was actually when Q and I did first meet. He was like, "Look, you make videos. You're mm-hmm. okay in front of a camera. You stream on Twitch. Make a LinkedIn video." And I'm like, "What? Like, yeah. what is? Come on! Like, that's, that's a resume a platform. platform. Yeah. That's a business platform. I don't wear a suit and tie. I'm wearing one suit in my life, and that was a rental for my sister's wedding. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I've never worn <laughs> a suit outside of that. Right? Yeah. I don't either. So yeah. I was like, "Why?" And he's like, "Just." Trust me. So we went outside. We actually met at the Rochambeau nearby. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and 
we walked down a couple streets and recorded a few takes of it, but I uploaded it. 5,000 views the next morning. That's I'm crazy. Like, okay, I see I see what you're getting at. It's yeah. like, I've made content for a decade now, right? Right. YouTube doesn't provide that kind of interaction. Twitch oh, no. doesn't even. Yeah. On a good day, you know, like Twitter, like Instagram, whatever. Yeah. Nothing matched that. Yeah. So I was intrigued. So I made another video the next day and then another video the next day. And then it was the weekend. So then I made videos those days. Yeah, and then yeah. it turns out, I'm like, okay, so what if I stockpile? Because I knew I had to work. I was traveling at the time for work. Yeah. I'm like, I know that I had to work. So I just stockpiled these videos, right? right. And I ended up doing 90 days straight. of yeah. Just straight LinkedIn content. And because of that, he was then like, Q was then like, I've never seen somebody commit to this like you did. Yeah. And he saw, I don't want to say that it was like a purposeful trial, but it was kind of like him... Right. testing me out a see, little bit see yeah. if you would actually commit is this guy serious about this and if right. he is well then let's make it happen and then he yeah. approached me and like yo let's do this so the content you're making for linkedin obviously is more business oriented right i mean half and half half and half yeah um do people respond to it in a similar way as other platforms because i mean you have you know you made videos on youtube and, yeah. and all that and stream and stuff is it a different i'm sure it is a different audience and different like it is temperament i guess i think like Part of what we preach and everything that we do and part of our kind of aura as a brand and as a business is just we are authentically us. Yeah. So for me, I learned how to do that through streaming on Twitch yeah. and through making YouTube videos. So it was really easy to just kind of make the content. I didn't really have to put on a different face. I mm. didn't really have to put on a different, you know, atmosphere around my content. I just essentially instead of making a 10 minute YouTube video, I took that content and just talked for a minute and a half. Yeah. Or you know, a lot of it initially was like I was one of the first phases, as I like to call them, of people that joined on LinkedIn video. And I was one mm. of the first that actually knew yeah. how to use a professional camera. Mm. So that was kind of a new thing. So a lot of it was me teaching video techniques initially. Like, yeah, hold your, you know, nobody wants to look up your nose. Nobody wants to, you know, make sure you're right. not, a, a open window is not behind you. Just weird things like that. Yeah. And that got me a lot of traction initially because people didn't know. They yeah. just saw they could just pull their phone out and whatever happened, happened, right? Yeah. It was the message. But yeah. then I was kind of the first one to be like, but it can be more than that. Right. And, it can be better. Yeah. And yeah. challenge a lot of people. So I don't think I really changed me and what I made, but more so just the direction of I knew sure. who I was about to approach and I knew what I wanted to get back. Mm. So I think really that was the most important thing. Yeah, because so did you start out streaming? Is that like what you did from the beginning as far as content? My first YouTube video was a guitar cover of Vampires by Godsmack. <laughs> I've, I've been looking for it for a long time. I know it's still out there, but I forget what the username of that channel oh. was. So I, I've been looking for it for like a month and a half now. You didn't list it or like anything It's like still that? public. Like I know it's, I've seen it. I just forgot oh, what that okay. username was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um I want to be a guitarist and then want to be like when Machinima was big and there was like Sark, mm. Sea Nanners and yeah. stuff. I want to be part of that team. And yeah. that was long ago already at this point. But that's got me, that's what got me into YouTubing and being a YouTuber and yeah. Call of Duty commentaries and things like that. But I was so boring back then. Like <laughs> I can I can say that now, not intentionally. I just, I didn't know what to do. Right. I right. thought that just any talking over a Call of Duty commentary was good enough. Right. Yeah. And I didn't, I was Luckily, I knew I knowing now I wasn't mature enough then, so I'm glad yeah. that it didn't work out because I would be totally I would have fallen on my face, which would have been a good thing, but right didn't maybe need that lesson at that time. So from there, I kind of pivoted here and there, did a few different things, started streaming on Twitch because I'm like, I'm, if I'm gonna just play video games and I'm spending all of this time of my life playing video games, mm -hmm. why don't I just do it live and do it for a purpose? Yeah, and. I thought that I was just playing video games live and having fun, but what I didn't realize was I was building charisma, I was building social skills, which right. I I was kind of an outcast in school, so I didn't yeah. really learn those things. But then within Twitch and stream, I was like, okay, that's interesting. And then I started to build a presence and I started to sell myself and got mm -hmm. affiliates and sponsors. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm really starting to see how this snowballs. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, like even talking to you right now, like you have all that for yeah. sure. So it's like that, that was uh, an essential part, I'm sure, of becoming who you are okay after all that and you kind of you you met these guys and you started creating content what was the what was the building of the actual business like because i think you know especially for for a business that's really centered around media you know you guys could have gone oh yeah every different we still way can. <laughs> yeah exactly um so how did you kind of narrow down your idea of like okay we're gonna go after this or do this was it just people that came to you or was it more of an intentional choice 
It was it was both. I think so. Initially, what when we when he and I first sat down, the idea was to travel the world and interview people mm-hmm. and sponsor their stories. Okay. So that was uh, that's obviously not what's happening yeah. now. <laughs> but <laughs> maybe a lot of that side, still know. falls into what we do just on a much smaller level. Like for a lot of our clients, we're interviewing people and we're pulling mm. their story and we're finding out interesting ways to pull their stories out and interesting ways to give people that are watching or listening a way to see that person in a way that isn't just, right. all right, where are you from? Stuff that you can find their resume on their LinkedIn profiles, right? That's yep. Everybody gets that. So that for us was always a big point. And yeah. I guess kind of answering that, like that's what we wanted to focus on. So for us, it was never like a question as to what to do. A lot, a lot, a lot. I would say probably 95% of our clients so far have been inbound yeah. or just, you know, old relationships that we just brought over essentially yeah because i the second person that i had on this podcast i found because of you guys actually josh arter okay who you guys did a video a video on um and did you shoot that video by the way brahma did okay yep that that, i mean that video is incredible like i mean all the content you you guys put out is incredible thank you um so i guess flipping it to like a, a more personal note you as a person um you your dad recently went through cancer yep uh, and he is in remission now right yep officially yeah. in remission um was that how, how was that experience for you and how did that reflect what you did i guess in life because i feel yeah. like having someone that close to you that went through something as you know traumatic and s- scary you know as yeah, that very much um did it change how you looked at your business or change how you look at life <laughs> yeah yeah because i i always tell people like i shouldn't be where i am today in many different ways because like between building a business which is not easy Mm -hmm. having your dad go through cancer which is also not easy and then having a fiance that lives a country away is also not easy (laughs) so like all those all those things were happening at the same time right and the good thing was i the people that are in all three of those places are people that i love people that care i care about and care about me yeah so it was always just uh Everybody that I impacted and everybody that impacted me was, it was never a, there was never any doubt, right? Like yeah. my dad never once, he was given, we were blessed because he was given a very positive outlook from day one. Mm-hmm. There was never like a, really any doubt looking back at it yeah. that he would pass from it. So we, we right. did have that positive outlook, but again, it's you cancer, hear that word. It doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And there are people that do what he's, you know, has have passed from what he's had because they just don't follow the program or whatever the case so i mean like this is not a a cold right this is cancer do what they tell you to do for goodness sake so he did everything by the book we supported him as a family um it was it was crazy because like for i think he was in the hospital for two months oh wow no couldn't have been three weeks maybe somewhere in that range every day i would go drive back up pick mom up bring her back down because he was at St. Luke's, yeah, kind of 20 minutes south of here yet even. And every day we went down, maybe a few days we missed because we were just, he was tired, we were tired, whatever the case yeah. was. But it, was all, it wasn't a question of if or what, or it was just, we're just going to do it. Right. And that influenced the business and everybody the, at the business was like, dude, man, yeah, go. Yeah. Like, take care of that. Like, it, we're going to be okay. And even now we've recently implemented like mental health days if you just need a day where you just right. need your space take that day, take your space. It will help you in the long term. It'll help us in the long term. And we've just all implemented things like that. So yeah, really like I wouldn't be here without the people that I surround myself with guaranteed. Yeah. Cause uh, I mean, that's, uh, that's another thing you are, you're engaged to someone who lives in Canada. Yeah. Right. Um, first of all, how did you guys meet if she's up there? Yeah. So I used to want to be a graphic designer. That's what I initially went to school for. So I was just on Instagram looking up People that do design work for sure. just build my portfolio. No mm-hmm. intent of anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She wanted a Twitch banner. I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. I was talking to her, got it done. And I was like, yeah, she's kind of cute too. Let's just keep that. Let's, <laughs> let's just keep, keep the conversation open, going. Yeah. And and happy to say, you know, everything's going fantastic. We have been in person or on Skype every day, nonstop since August 7th, 2014. Jeez. That is a long every day, time. Every single day. Not wow. one day we've been, and we're still not sick of each other. We still love each other more every day. Wow. Yeah. So what is, has it been tough though still like trying to figure out, because you're not going to Canada, I'm presuming, no, right? No, yeah. she, she's coming here and it was her choice. Yeah. I said, 
I'm not making that choice, but I'm not saying no if you want to come here sort yeah. of thing. So yeah. she was very adamant on wanting to come here. And I'm like, all right, let's make it happen. Let's just do it. Yeah. So it is absolutely hard, you know, because right now we're in the process of waiting for her paperwork to get to the consulate in Canada. Okay. And I emailed our, we're going through a law firm and I emailed just to check in and I got an instant bounce back. I'm in the hospital through a medical emergency. We'll get oh. back. And it's like, now we got to wait. I hope you're okay. Yeah, but yeah. gosh darn it, now we got to wait. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so it's just, it's just constant stress. And, you know, again, I couldn't do it. Couldn't be going through with anybody else. You know, we've supported each other in every way. And we've, we've taken the time online to learn about each other. Yeah. And I always tell people like, I, there's obviously we'll be together forever, but like for whatever reason, hypothetically speaking, I couldn't have a local relationship. You, I've learned so much about her mm. by being apart and yeah. having to learn, okay, if you're having a bad day, how do I comfort you from afar? Yeah. And those are things that you can apply to anything, you know, like right. if, if somebody is struggling at, at, at work, how do we rally around them? How do we right. do that? If she's having a bad day, okay, what can I do? Do I come home a little bit early? Do I push some things aside for a little bit? Like just that will always be a better choice than whatever it is you're working on. Right. Is it, is it a, is it a super long process or is it just a fact of like form? We there's a lot of forms and stuff. June of 17 and we applied seven months ago, I think at this point. So okay. it's just a lot of waiting and there's no, you, you just don't know. You yeah. just, here it is. Six months, two years, they say. Yeah, yeah. It could be one, could, it could be, be the other, yeah. could be anything it's such in between. A big so yeah. Yeah. It's just a lot of waiting. So with with your with your business, um is it weird to have employees like, or you, cause you have employees now. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so how did you, did you just learn kind of by going through it is like yeah. payroll and all that stuff. Like I thought it would be really weird, really difficult, yeah. but we don't look at anybody as an employee, mm -hmm. even people that are theoretically interns, they're yeah. just as much a part of the team as anybody else. So yeah. every, every day, every meeting, we encourage everybody to, to pitch in their opinions. Nobody's yeah. there just to do what they're doing and then leave. We're, there together to build it together yeah to work together to grow their brands to grow our brands sure. outside of the business even yeah and then to work together to just grow the brand into whatever we can yeah because it's all i mean it's all helpful it's all cyclical yeah. if they're if they're bigger you know and they're they're bringing that back to to you guys too and i just want to like it, it's for me personally it's about creating that environment right mm -hmm. like i'm noticing people starting to come in and instantly take their shoes off like yeah. that makes me happy i don't know why that's <laughs> yeah. such a weird point to make but yeah, like yeah. that makes me happy because i know that that I've created or we've created a space that they feel comfortable in and that they mm. want to work in. Yeah. So it's everybody, a lot of our interns that like that time, you know, that three month initial period is worn off and we're like, yeah, we like you around. You want to keep coming back? Yeah. Well then just keep coming back, <laughs> yeah, man. Like, you, we're not gonna say, you know, whatever, we'll make it happen. Yeah. So it's awesome to, to be able to inspire those around me and get that same amount of inspiration back. Yes. I am a co-founder. Yes. I have, you know, quote unquote, automatic authority but that's not how we look at it we just want yeah. to help everybody as much as we can right so from the get-go i want i'm interested in this like you when you started when you were younger were you creating content oh yeah yeah what were you making um i mean i used to just like when i was like really little i drew like nascar tracks on paper and stuff like that okay. and i tried to do like paper modeling of like yeah. banking and things like that which should have taken me like the architecture route or something yeah, sure, along sure. those lines but I definitely don't really follow NASCAR anymore or anything yeah. like that. But, you know, I've always been creating and whether it was graphic design or video or mm. whatever the case was, I've just always been artistic. Can't yeah. draw. Took two college drawing classes, only passed because they liked me. <laughs> I swear <laughs> to God. Really? <laughs> Probably. Because yeah. I definitely did not get anything put on the wall outside the room. <laughs> Wait, so why did you go into the... Because you thought you could because i mean i can't draw yeah, either i'm terrible I, so i went for graphic design and those were the first two classes oh, that were rough. prerequisites and then instantly like first day i straight up rose my hand like what if you can't draw <laughs> like i literally posed the, posed the question they're like well if you improve you'll pass and i'm like there's hope good to know I'll i just started right. really bad <laughs> yeah so i have to improve yeah so there was definitely challenge there and but yeah i went to school for graphic design and I thought graphic design at the time was making YouTube thumbnails, Twitch banners, something like that. Yeah. And that's absolutely not what it was. So yeah. I'm like, maybe I shouldn't shouldn't pursue that and dump all of my money into an education just yet. So, so did you switch? What did you switch to? I switched unofficially to film for like a semester. And then I'm okay. just like, yeah, no. I like film. I, you know, went through like 
eight millimeter and splicing mm. it in the light room and all that. Yeah. And that was fun. And I still have one of my reels projects, but yeah, I don't know. I just didn't like the school route. Where'd you, where did you go? UWM. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that they have a good film program there. Really good they? film. Yeah. Like absolutely no complaints about yeah. the program whatsoever. It was just more so what was right for me at the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's cause I, I really wish I would have gone there. I went to a private school and it mm-hmm. freaking drowned in debt, you know, yeah. afterwards. Such a regret. Yeah. I'm like, I should have just gone to a public school. Um, but yeah, so like early on, like I, cause I was creating stuff early on too. Like I would make, um, like videos with my brother, like mm-hmm. of us snowboarding down yeah. a hill that was like, you know, 10 feet tall yeah. in our front yard. Um, do you, do you still have some of the projects that you made like from early on, like video wise? Yeah. So I still somewhere it's on, it's also on YouTube somewhere, I think, or one of my old hard drives, but like I have a lot of eighth now that was junior year, like video projects back okay. when it was like back when IMAX were still big tubes sort of <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, and yeah. That sounds so dated, but it really wasn't that long ago. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't. <laughs> they change them yeah, every year. We did like a Batman spoof and it's just horrible, but <laughs> we cry laughing every time. And we knew we made it to be funny. And, right. you know, two of the two of the kids that were in our group were just I don't want to say class clowns because they definitely were very not, but yeah. had a very goofy personality and we brought in a few of their friends and it just Oh, it was, it was fantastic. But yeah, Yeah. I still have some of those somewhere. So when you were doing all this stuff before you got into your business, was there a point where it was like, okay, I can make this into something else? Never, Uh, never, never. Never. I made the, I took those classes one because my high school didn't really have a lot of options Mm. and that was kind of the most creative option that wasn't drawing. Sure. So that was what I did. And even then I like, I didn't really think that I could be video or do video i really wasn't interested and i was more like all right youtube 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 gaming gaming video games call of duty whatever so that was my my straight up hyper focus but yeah that definitely didn't pan out but i i I always knew that i would do something creative it was just a matter of what and i always knew that i could and wanted to become an entrepreneur but i didn't know how when what so yeah yeah because that's what i was gonna ask It, it was something that like you just, I guess, learn by doing. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, I learned everything by doing. 100%. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, were you worried again at, at the beginning of it? Like when you started no, your business? It's no, it's weird. You no. have like a quiet confidence. I did, and <clears throat> and again, it's because I knew I trusted the people that were around me. Mm. You know, it wasn't. It didn't bother me that Q had two businesses that didn't pan out because sure. I knew deep down that maybe that wasn't what he saw himself doing long term, which could be right or wrong. But yeah, nothing about that process worried me yeah and every day it builds more confidence which is more and more fun every day but that fear is completely gone i mean there was obviously initial doubts because i was like all right i'm getting married i'm Mm. applied for the k1 visa like i i have to legally have some income to show yeah. Because if I don't, then I have to find a sponsor, which then is a 10-year commitment for that person so that even if we divorce, wow. they are then responsible. It was just like this crazy, crazy, crazy thing. So for me, initially, it was just like, I don't have any doubts, but I at least need to show some form of income legally. Yeah. So that was really my main focus. And once we figured that out, clean, smooth sailing. Yeah. So what has been like uh, your favorite, I guess, moment that you've had in in were having your own business so far was there like a really defining moment for you like wow this is like i'm 25 i have my own business you know like this is pretty crazy i like to not think about those things because i think the more i try to keep my mindset out of that the more i'm able to just keep my head down and just Mm. better myself and better our work there are definitely moments that that make you proud like we're I mean, we're, we work for the Admirals, so we go to a lot of their games and yeah. seeing our stuff on the Jumbotron and yeah. seeing people's eyes watching and clapping and stuff like we did a lot of stuff for they had a cancer night and okay. it was cool because we were able to do my dad yeah. at that time and he was in the hospital. So we had one of the players come in and visit him at the hospital and, you know, even to this day, like pregame That's while so they're cool. on the ice he'll turn around and wave and say hi and i'm like dude you're about to play a hockey game like <laughs> yeah, just worry pay me. attention i'm <laughs> yeah. just filming don't yeah. worry about me but you know it's it's cool that connection is always cool because you know business is business but it's still human and right and that comes through and we try to make it come through in everything that we do yeah and they're in the playoffs now yeah. so they're doing really well they're the Emeralds. hot right now 12 yeah. 13 straight i think something like that it's gonna be a fun journey it's a good it's a good uh time for wisconsin sports it generally is. it yeah. really is yeah are you a big sports fan or i am yeah i am yeah 
Uh, and you're from here, obviously, right? Yep. So you're Packers, Brewers. So ironically, I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan because of Jerome Bettis. <laughs> Okay. And I'm a Boston Red Sox fan because of Tim Wakefield. Okay. So, but I always, I like, I've always been a fan of teams that build within. Sure. And now the the Brewers, I mean, they sign guys, but yeah. generally speaking, they have a good farm system. Yeah. Admirals obviously built huge, and now the Predators are one of the best teams in right. the NHL because of it. So we went just a month ago to watch a Predators game and stuff like that. So yeah. it's cool to have that connection. But yeah, I've never been to an NHL game. They're a riot <laughs> yeah yeah really fun yeah yeah I've, I've i've only been to admiral's games and the, i mean those are fun to watch yeah, it's exactly. pretty it's pretty cool how hockey is set up that you know you can watch an nhl player at an admiral's game mm-hmm. at some time mm-hmm. you know if they get sent down or sent up or whatever Conditioning assignment whatever pekka got brought down when yeah. he was still in his prime craig smith was another guy got it's like oh sweet yeah let's you go watch, watch Heck, yeah, yeah, yeah you can watch him like front row oh, yeah. for not not a very expensive cost no um so i was gonna ask you more about like your family and how they felt when you started all this were they immediately supportive were they worried about it at all they were i i have been blessed my parents have always supported anything that i do and they mm. always saw potential in me sure and i i feel so bad because i told my mom that i was quitting my job to pursue an unknown journey of entrepreneurship the yeah. day my dad told her that oh. he was diagnosed with cancer and i was wow. just like that's a, um, a lot of stuff I'm sorry, to take in. <laughs> but i've got news too yeah. <laughs> but no they've always been supporting me and and i i feel bad because like obviously now i spend a lot less time with those around me outside of the business but they understand and they support me and push me you know it's just another huge thing as well yeah because are, are they from that similar background do they have entrepreneurial my dad worked his way into owning a business um and owned it for i think a decade or so wow. but otherwise not really okay and there my mom's worked in a school district her whole life and has loved every minute of it she works with autistic children so she has that and and i volunteered every chance i get because it's just a lot of fun but yeah it's not necessarily straight entrepreneur but yeah always uh if you want to make something happen make something happen right because i mean that that just saying that that's something that was probably instilled from a young age for you if, if your dad worked somewhere to eventually own yeah. a business like that to see that in front of your eyes as you're growing up is is pretty incredible i'm sure oh yeah and yeah. i didn't even notice at the time you know i was just like right. oh okay I'm maybe it's a problem you know i was still so young and naive to the whole situation i didn't really know this is what happens this is how business works and yeah you know i truthfully i can't say that i was even really too involved in what he did as as the owner of that business but yeah i mean it definitely he's been a salesman his whole life so for me through Twitch streaming, now the business, like, I've, yeah. I've always been able to sell myself, you know, which I think is arguably the most important thing. Yeah, because, I mean, even with the with your LinkedIn content and stuff, um, is that ever something that, I guess, I guess you'd have to know, you know, what your idea is? Because I, I always feel like, for me, I mean, I guess you're going through this as you go. So do you go to, like, a conference um, or something and, and do, you know, a talk in front of a group and then go back and be like, I can actually give these tips to these people on a video later. Do you oh, know yeah. what I mean? Because oh, it's yeah. like, you know, I'm sure a lot of the experiences that you're going through are so new, um, yeah. in a lot of ways, you know, doing things you haven't necessarily done before. So I guess for the content afterwards, is it, is it, is it kind of like that where it's like, well, I, this didn't time. go as planned. So I mean, maybe people yeah. should do this. No, I mean a lot of what, I like to talk about coincides with the content that I make, but also at the same time, like anytime I'm speaking, it's just to provide inspiration to those that maybe need it or just need a swift kick in the butt sometimes. Cause it's just like, yeah, I had no idea. I I playfully still don't know what I'm doing, (laughs) but you know, we we're learning as we go and that's part of being a human. So you have the ability to make it happen if you truly want to make it happen. And that's, you know, I try and preach that with everything that I do, but yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting because I'll be speaking and then I'm like, oh, yeah, or I'll get asked a question. You know, a lot of the times I love the questions that I get asked because mm-hmm. like, we'll present a presentation and I know Izzy and I spoke once together and, and we were when we were done, we were like, look at our watches and we're like, ooh, that was a little short. But the yeah. Q&A filled out the rest of the time and the Q&A was just incredible. The questions we got asked, I was <laughs> just, just like, coming at you. oh, thank God, they really <laughs> saved us there. But like, they were so really good questions. Yeah. And we took away a lot of like, okay, we need to narrow down on maybe our message isn't strong mm-hmm. enough, you know, because I, I think that's a, the questions that you get asked are a good indicator of what you are missing without mm-hmm. you realizing it. Sure. So for us at that point, it was, okay, 
people know what we do, but they don't know what we do. We kept getting asking, people kept asking, how do you make money? You know, you mm. just make videos. How does that make money? Yeah. And it was like, okay, we need to clarify that message. So yeah. now we focus on showing through our YouTube vlogs and all that stuff. Like, here's our processes. Here's what we do. We yeah. actually do know what we're doing. Even though we're young, we yeah. do make money. We do have clients. Well, yeah, because that, that's what I, that, at the time, that's why I was curious about that because I do feel like there's kind of an unspoken stigma against young mm -hmm. entrepreneurs where it's like either either the stigma is to, uh, one of two things. It's right. either your parents are rich right. and they're giving you this money and you're just freaking blowing it and doing whatever you want. Or it's like, well, you're young, so you don't know what you're doing. And you both of those I mean? are not true for us. So right, it's, exactly. it's awesome. That's yeah. what I'm saying. And, and so I'm sure like there's a lot of questions that might be a. Uh, I don't know. For me, I would I would probably get angry at a lot of those because you could probably hear this subtle tone of like, yeah, well, man, I do. I'm doing it right now. So like, why are you questioning me? I I, I love when I get asked anything really because again, you know, it goes yeah. back to like, okay, maybe our message isn't clear enough here, or here, or wherever. So I like getting asked it. We do get a lot of of people that are like, well, you're just young, you're just mm. kids, whatever. But like, we've also had people say. I've been all over the country and I've never seen something like this. Yeah. This is a million dollar right. idea when, when it's done right. Like mm -hmm. you guys have something really impressive here. Yeah. There's both sides. So you know, you take, you have selective hearing. You want right, to exactly. you you listen to the negative. You want to hear. Cause like, again, if it's something that we're doing wrong, we're going to own up to it and be like, okay, we're not clear enough here. Yeah. Let's put more emphasis on making sure that we're clear here. Mm -hmm. Or a lot of people initially were like, well, what is IEEG? And mm. like, okay, we can tell you it's an example of, or, you know, in yeah, books, yeah, yeah, you have yeah. IE, you have EG, right? So we kind of right. put them together. So that was that. But like, people are so focused on what does it mean? And it was really just like, look, it's just our agency. Don't worry about what it means. <laughs> yeah, this is <laughs> That's what's making too much money right now. Like, so there's a lot of that. But I like any feedback that we get because it really shows where we're putting our efforts if it's worth it or not and i'm sure from youtube comments you get you kind of grew uh, some sort of barrier to that too because like i did a series on uh on mental health i have ocd and anxiety mm -hmm. and so i did this 30-day series in may because it's mental health awareness month about all different stuff in in mental health and i would get sometimes some videos would just get shitted on and oh, i'm yeah. like who are you yeah like why are, this is like a topic that's no to profile be, picture nothing right. yeah. everybody's supposed to be behind this like i'm I'm not like shitting on it i'm like positively trying to help right um but yeah you still get those comments you know all the time and uh did did you have you gotten those all the time i yeah. would have i still have still? people come into my twitch stream and be like you're <sighs> ugly man it's like what do you do to that like do you just ignore just it let it go yeah i in fact there there was one person that i always referred to i don't know who he is i still don't know what but he would always come on my twitch and be like you're hideous you're ugly whatever i'm just like how's it going man like i mean once a right. month guaranteed this guy would come in and it was never he wouldn't stay or linger he would just be like you're ugly and i'd be like get in thanks get out. man <laughs> and i'm like i hope that you're having you know i just spin it into positivity like it right. definitely is forced on my end because it's like all right well he said i'm ugly yeah that's a that's an opinion right whether or not he truly think i whatever but that's his opinion it also doesn't matter opinion. if he thinks i'm hot or not right. you know, I'm not like i'm not there <laughs> right i'm i'm playing a video game that yeah. i'm not good at i'm telling you i'm not good at it so yeah. it doesn't matter but yeah. a lot of it is just like where are these people coming from and analyzing right. okay you have to just pay attention to where people are coming from mm. and that's really the most important point and Again, that applies to, to the business because, yeah. like, for everything that we do, all of our stories, you know, Q had nine hundred negative nine hundred dollars in his bank account. Mm -hmm. Brem was a Sunni's refugee. Yeah, Izzy had to do Uber Eats to just pay rent. Like, yeah. we've all had our our hardships. So it's just put yourself in other people's shoes and know that it, they're probably just. It Something's may sound happening. like hate, but so, yeah. you can then see where that's coming from and maybe help them right because i feel like you know it sometimes it does sound like hate and sometimes it is you know right. but it also it might be there's a reason for that mm -hmm. you know th there's something behind the the curtain in their life that's causing them to be that way um i was going to ask you about uh what were we talking about about your oh no about millennials generally mm. because like i think that that's where this whole thing comes from I'm, i just get so sick of hearing people yeah. shit on millennials all the time and tell them like how entitled and stuff they are oh, yeah. and so i think i think when uh when topics like like uh you may be going out to uh, speak at an event and there's like an older demographic of people there um and if they were let's say i was speaking and 
and they were like saying kind of kind of subtly shitting on you right you know like you're not supposed to be there like that would really bother me just because of the context of like all of that there was a time our at women's entrepreneurship week i was moderating a panel and it was me joe peschel richie burke jackie hermes and then q Mm. and somebody asked i'm 50 or i forget exactly what she said but definitely older than all of us yeah why the emphasis on young people and it was a really valid point. Sure. But again, like with the business, it wasn't an intentional choice, right? right. It was yeah. a LinkedIn panel. We brought the people that we knew were the right fit for that panel. Sure. Didn't matter what age. We didn't say, oh, you're young. Let's, nothing like that. We yeah. don't intentionally do that. So Q was like giving the mic and he's like, age doesn't matter. Like yeah. the, open up your mouth and bring your voice out because there's no reason that you shouldn't be sitting here with us talking. Yeah. Because it's not, we get criticized a lot for it, but any age again can make anything right, happen. Yeah, you can start a successful business at 50. So do it and yeah. then get up on that stage. Like make it happen. There's all, no reason yeah. you can't. And also if you're starting a business at 50, you're going through the same stuff that you're going yeah, through right now. Absolutely. And you're 50. Let's, let's work together. Let's so you share don't know those anything things. more than I right. know. You're still starting from scratch right. just like I did. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that always just bugs me. I, I just, I see those comments all the time, you know, on, uh, on Twitter and on the news and stuff. Oh, yeah. It's just like, just constant, you know, entitled millennial comments but anyways um because we are both millennials yeah. i love it i yeah. lo- I embrace it absolutely and it's also just made up mm-hmm. like people just make up terms for the year that you were born in it doesn't necessarily characterize any sort of no anything about anybody we all start different parts of life at different times right right like in if, different places yeah if you want to start a business people. at 65 start a business at 65 it's happened people do it right. like it's not something that is illegal in any way like just <laughs> yeah go just do go it go man do it um is that mostly what you're talking about when you're going to like functions? Is it like entrepreneurial stuff and, and how helping people figure out how to start businesses? Is that like a, a little bit? I think, you know, we've spoken in front of a, a few high school classes that mm. is just like, you know, show these kids that, yeah, it's possible. Was it your high school? Did you go back no, to your high school? Not, not yet. Not yet. That'd I would cool. love to. That That'd would be, be cool. cool. I should reach out. But yeah. Um, truthfully, I don't think anybody in my city knows I own a business to be really? honest, but yeah, I don't no reason to announce it to the world like that. But, um, yeah, I would say like a lot of what we talk about is just showing people that it is possible and and that they can. And even, you know, for, for the LinkedIn locals or women's entrepreneurship week, it was really a lot of just like, here's the value that we have. And Mm -hmm. a lot of it is, yeah, credibility to our age, but, when we do show that we know what we're doing and right. we do have projections to be a million dollar company soon. And it's yeah. just like, okay, yeah, we will shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just sit there and listen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we know what we're doing. <laughs> we're going to make mistakes, but we're okay with that. We're going to take but those so and everyone, learn from them. Right. Know? Yeah. We're okay every, with it. It doesn't matter how old you are. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, it's, it's just, it's, it's really cool that you are a part of the community and you and I feel like you're also just so involved in it. Yeah. Like you're involved in a lot of stuff and you go to a lot of networking events and stuff, not because people have told you to go or pay you to go. It's because like you genuinely want to help. Yeah, people. I mean, we were just at an networking event that was like two blocks from our office and we were waiting for uh, one of our, one of our employees dads to pick him up. And I was just like, yeah, let's just go. Let's yeah. just go. Or any, you know, we're all sitting at the office and we're like, oh, hey, look at this. This is going on. Let's go. Yeah. It's not a, it doesn't matter who, like I, Milwaukee is a very tiny community, which is good mm-hmm. and bad. Yeah. There are definitely pockets that don't like expansion, sure. but there are also places that you can be. And, yeah. and we just, we're not there to do anything, spite anyone, right. whatever that case is. We're just there to support people that are also doing amazing things. Cause right. When you work together, I forget the exact quote, but it's like alone you will go fast, but together you'll go far or something like yeah. that. It's like just be together, do things together. It's, competition is just ridiculous. Right. Because I mean, at the end of the day, you're all trying to get to the same place. Yeah. And, all, and, and the thing about Milwaukee, yeah, it is a, a, such a small community that if you just start deciding that you're just going to be an asshole to everyone, mm-hmm. like that's going to come back Word real spread. real quickly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think that's, that's just a really cool, do you go to hashtag MK events sometimes? Lot, yeah. Yeah. I, J Matt is one of, uh, a good friend of mine. He does a really good job. I know it's, it's that is something as, as well. I mean, it has nothing to do with you, but like, it's something that that has grown insanely. Oh, yeah. Like, oh yeah. I remember him starting it and he was like, there was like four people that were coming to them. And now I think it's like, when I started going, there was like 15 to 20 and now crazy. like when I was, uh, uh, 
what the what the red tag i forget exactly what he calls it there's like yeah. 75 people there and then the next one's like 120 and it's like yeah dude like keep it going yeah, man it's like, crazy yeah. how it's growing you seem like the kind of person that also um lives by kind of like some mantras mm-hmm. you know um like do you get up really early in the morning and like do that kind of stuff it's weird i do okay. naturally right my body will okay. wake me up at seven o'clock if it's seven o'clock because yeah. I, I don't set an alarm on the weekend, but I'm still up super early. Just I'm yeah. used to it. Um, I've always been an early to bed, early to rise kind of person. I like to say that I do, you know, have the whole mantra thing. Yeah. I like to get up at six. I just finished a, a thing where I walked a mile right away in the morning for a month straight oh, nice. every, every morning, which helped me a lot. Part of owning a business is now being a lot more sedentary. So I'm trying to break right. that mold, but I do you think, film this stuff? Like, do you put it up on your YouTube channel? Like, do I do like yeah. where it fits? You yeah. know, like I made a video of that month and you know checked in every few yeah. days, kind of like a wheezy waiter sort of. Video. Yeah, I love he's been waiter, doing dude. a lot of those he's, things yeah, lately. He's so really I don't like saying that I'm taking that idea, but I'm totally taking well, that it's idea. Not his idea, <laughs> true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, just stuff like that. And I like to say that I do and don't have the whole mantra thing going on. I don't yeah. really have like a set schedule or a set routine, but I try and find what works, and I think. I was a pitcher in high school Mm -hmm. and a lot of pitching was, okay, this pitch isn't working. Let's adjust it. Maybe we're throwing more fastballs instead of changeups. Maybe the locations or my deliveries off a little bit. So just finding those little things and shouting out another podcast, Mark Matry's humans 2.0, you Mm -hmm. know, just, he made the podcast to find out what, and you know, he had questions about life. He wanted the answers. He interviewed cool people that had those answers. Right. So he has now developed his complete life based on, the information that he's learned from interviewing people yeah. so a lot of that is kind of applying to us and whether it's a book or just general test and fail and stuff like that yeah. you know it's i'm now doing my best i'm letting myself have you know a little bit of leeway but i'm trying like no added sugar in my diet and mm. stuff like that so just small things like that that kind of create habits yeah because i i've there's another youtuber uh he's like a minimalist and i forget Matt his Diavella? Name. yeah yeah i love he, that guy yeah he was talking about um how essentially how you should structure if you want to start something new is like do it for a month straight yeah. like only that thing yeah and then if it, it develops into a habit rather than what i used to do um which was do everything at and, once. and i did the same thing yeah. so like every month i've been doing like two like one or two yeah. so like at first it was i'm gonna read a book every month and then it was i'm gonna drink 64 ounces of water every day mm-hmm. or whatever that was. So I just like build it, crush it, add to it, you yeah. know, just keep going back. Cause then eventually in 12 months that if you start it now, a year from now, right. you will have built so many positive habits right? without yeah. really much effort. Truthfully. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just focusing on that one thing to change. Cause it does get overwhelming. Cause I mean, uh, speaking from experience and everyone else, like there's a lot of things that humans do that aren't productive no, or healthy. Not at all. Um, and so, like, trying to break down that and doing that all at once is just a headache and yeah. never going to work. No. I also used to try to just do a million things at once. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm interested in this, this, and this, like, similar to you, where it's yeah. like, I want to do all of that. Yeah. Um, do you ever feel like you get burnt out or, like, are, or, and if so, like, what do you do? I think the beautiful thing about what I do is that there is, you can very easily burn yourself out, but you can yeah. also very easily avoid it. So like mm. for us, we have, whether it's a lot of client pieces at a time, or maybe we're shooting a lot today, but editing a lot tomorrow because there isn't as much to shoot. Like yeah. every day is a little bit different. So, you know, we're also using that time to, like right now we're just using our Sony A7s and whatnot. Yeah. So like we don't have an FS7 or a RED or anything like that. Mm. So we're applying this time before we get to that point to learn lighting, to learn audio, mm. to make sure that everything else cinematically is on point. So right. for us, it's, if we're burnt out, Let's go for a walk. Truthfully, yeah. having the public market right there is really yeah. helpful and yeah. stuff. So, like, we we just get up. We are very good at recognizing when we're about to, like, kind of hit a stifle. So, we yeah. just get up, avoid the situation for a little bit, go for a walk, move the body, get out of the office yeah. for a second. And we all know and and say that, like, dude, if you got to go work from somewhere else, go work from somewhere else. If yeah. you, you know, if you're writing copy for somebody and you're just you need a coffee shop because you need right. the extra noise, go do that. If yeah. you need to edit, just put on your headphones. We'll get it. Like we got yeah. slack for a reason. Yeah. So, you know, there's just, we always find ways to either work with each other or maybe it's, you know, we hit a creative block on a client piece. Yo, let's go shoot a video, a LinkedIn yeah. video or something quick. Like just, there's always something that we can do to just break that mindset mm. before it gets to be a problem. Yeah. Cause I, th- I think I was reading uh, a post of yours. Uh, it must've been a while ago that, 
you you were so caught up with what you were doing that you didn't really have time for yourself anymore. Yeah. Like you weren't like exercising and stuff, which mm-hmm. is what you did all the time. Um, have you found more of a balance with that now? I have. Yeah. I think a lot of it is were a lot of it was like okay let's get this done a lot of it was just like self-inflicted pressure of like we have to do this we have to get it done right it has to be good and we still put all of that focus on but Mm. we trust ourselves a lot more and we do things right the first time a lot more now so it's a lot of it's just like you know now on fridays we're not touching client work unless we absolutely want to because it's just like we need time for us and i think we're all recognizing that and putting those things in place has helped us the first four days of the week to do everything that needs to be done. Mm. Or if we got somebody that we just got to film or whatever it is on yeah. a Friday, like, yeah, that's fine, but don't force yourself to do anything. So we're giving yeah. ourselves that space. Yeah. And speaking from, uh, not having my own business at all, but I feel like, uh, there's no off switch for that. Right. You know, like you can't go home and be like, Oh yeah, well I'm done with work. Like, no, you're not. You like, you still own a business. So nine like, o'clock calls all. Oh yeah. Right. It happens. Yeah. So, um, was that just something that you had to get used to at the beginning and be like, okay, well, I got to figure out how to be okay with turning this off sometimes? Yeah, I think a lot of it too is just like knowing, so like now I've done the post-it notes thing. Mm. So everything that I have to do is on a post-it note. And I'm okay. very much, uh, I like taking that, ripping it in half <laughs> and throwing it yeah, away, yeah. you know? So I will write everything down on a post-it note that I have that's a task, right? Mm. And I'll organize it based on what it is. And it's like pillars and it's sure. actually pretty organized, which is weird, but... Um, <laughs> And then I just, as I finish it, I put it on a separate pile. And then at the end of that day, I just take that whole pile and rip it right in half because it's just, it's so satisfying. (laughs) But that has helped me to just know what I have on my plate. Mm -hmm. And if there's a lot or if there's something that's necessary to be done, we can delegate. Yeah. We're all just as much help to each other as the next guy. So if Brema's not doing something, yo, can you edit this real quick? Yeah, sure. If Rob's not, you know, Rob's busy, I'll help out. Or if he needs some video shot, I'll go out with him and shoot a few videos. Like we always just know what we've got on each other's plates and just, are we delegating properly? Are we getting everything done? And then that allows us to now as we get more employees and as we do more, we're able to balance our lives better so that I can go home and unless there's something like I'll always have files with me or whatever, but unless there's an absolute necessity, we just wait until Monday. Because you, you are seemingly a very positive person. Yeah, yeah I'd like yeah. to think so. <laughs> um, you just walk out of here just like... Yeah, you're right. Sucks. <laughs> you're sucks. Um, so I guess based on your entrepreneurial spe- experience, for people out there that would like to start a business or lo- would like to like try doing that, what what are like some major things that you ran into that you could yeah. people could steer clear of? I, I guess. think like... People ask me, like, what about business have I learned about entrepreneurship? And that's true. Mm. I, w- I always turn it. I'm like, I've learned more about myself mm. because, like, I now know what I need to work well yeah. and what I don't need to do to work well. Yeah. I had a half a thing of cinnamon rolls from Pillsbury this morning. I wouldn't do that on a normal day. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, things like that. And you learn a lot about how you operate and mm. how you operate with other people, I sure. think, is also a thing. So, like, every time we sit down and have meetings, that, like, of just team meetings like yeah. team building things like we learn a lot about working with each other and mm. okay we know you have this way of working you yeah. work better in this environment so we just work with that and we we approach that differently so like learn yourself first mm. and you'll learn more about yourself once you do start a business by force but like yeah. know what you need to operate sure. know financially how much you can cut out of your life because you will put a lot of money into a business and it will be hard yeah know what diet you can run on i do a lot of rice and beans not because i don't have you know money yeah. to buy food but it's just efficient i like it it yeah. works it feeds my body right yeah. that's just what i enjoy eating yeah. so like you find out a lot about yourself so yeah so where can people find everything that you do like i mean you guys are literally everywhere you got yeah. So start, you got a new podcast. Yep. Is it out? The first episode's out, right? Yeah. I think we're 30 something in at this point. 30 episodes yeah, in? I think so. I thought it was so a more something. recent thing. We rebranded. So we were the oh, Urban okay. Misfits show just because okay. it was the business name and yeah, it was yeah, cool. Yeah. But we like Strange on Purpose a lot better. Mm-hmm. You know, we always ask people what makes you strange on purpose. And yeah, um, so we're opening up Strange on Purpose Studios, which will house our podcast, but we're also going to house, we haven't really confirmed or done much selling of it yet but yeah we just put up some soundproofing the other day nice yeah so we'll we'll have a little space in our office for people to come do their own podcast or whatever that yeah. looks like however they want to do it so um yeah we have strange on purpose podcasts that we've loved and again that's just 
us interviewing people that we love and interviewing yeah. people that we want to yeah. know more about or something that we want to learn about. Is it more business people or is it, it could be anyone? It could be anybody. Okay. You know, so I just interviewed the social media coordinator for G Fuel because I've known oh, G nice. Fuel for years yeah. and, you know, we've interviewed Willie Morris who helped, who sold Faith Box with Gary Vaynerchuk. Okay. Like we've interviewed all different yeah, kinds yeah. of people, people within Milwaukee, outside of Milwaukee. Yeah. We, don't really have much of a preference. Yeah. And uh, the other things, What? It, so what else, what else are you, where else can people find you? Urban Misfits, is that your, that's just the whole Yeah, but umbrella. yeah, so on LinkedIn, specifically, I know that we're Urban Misfit Ventures. Yeah. Um, Instagram and Facebook, MK Misfits. Oh, yeah. Um, Twitter, MK Misfits. But otherwise, one of those two will get you to us somehow. Yeah. And then yours, you're all the same. Your did's yeah, live, right? Live on everything. For everything. That's clutch. That's everything. good. Yeah. That's well, why I said. you just typing I, in names? Until I did. You, yeah. I, I started with Instagram because that was my most important. Like yeah. Instagram and Twitch at the time were my two. Like, all right, I'm starting there. If I can get it there. And yeah, then yeah, yeah. Twitter was okay. And then Facebook was okay. And I'm like, all right, that's going to be something. it. I'm done now. This get is all it. Of these. Yeah. Yeah. That's a hard thing to do across it is. all, it all really platforms, is. especially that short of a name. Yeah. Eight characters. Yeah. Now I, I messaged the guy that has dids on Instagram and he hasn't, I don't think he's active, so he probably won't ever get back to me, but I'm like, <sighs> if only I could pay like a hundred bucks for that or something. Right. right? Like, yeah. I would totally do it. <laughs> yeah. That'd be the best. Or, I, or you see people with just like their first name, yeah. like Sam. I'm like, how early were you yeah. here to get that? hundred percent. Oh. It's a bummer because my last name is so long. I never want to use it for any of my handles because right. like, no one can spell it. Right. So well, we have uh, Chandler on our team and his last name is Lahoski, but it oh. ends with a J and oh, every one of his worse. handles is his last name. And it's like, you got to We change. always type in every time it, we <laughs> scream across the office like, dude, what's your Instagram? We always forget that it's his last name because we'll start typing Chandler and it's sure. not Chandler. It's Luhoski. And it's like, gosh, darn it. Come on, change dude. It, it starts man. with a, your name ends with a J. Why? Yeah, that's so, that's, that's bizarre. What is that? Polish or something? A uh, Ukrainian, I think. Ukrainian. That's a tough name, man. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I'm better off than that, but yeah. like <laughs> not by much. <laughs> um, so yeah, it did live everywhere and you have started now streaming again, right? Yep. Um, do you, is there a consistent schedule with that or do you just... Saturdays and Wednesdays? Do you play specific games? Oh gosh, no, I'm no? bad at everything. <laughs> I'm moderately good at everything. Let's okay. put it that way. Okay. So I, I'm huge into city skylines. I love okay. that game. I love city Sims. I don't know why they're just addicting. The yeah, music is peaceful. Yeah. Why not? Uh, I've streamed chess, world of Warcraft, Heroes of the storm. Oh, I used to play world of Warcraft. Um, that was such a mistake. What else have I played? Yeah, that was a 10 year mistake. Oh my God. I yeah. lost so much of my life I to know. that game. I know it. Yeah, those are kind of the the general ones. I I've been oh, Roller Coaster Tycoon is cool. Oh, that's a fun game. Yeah, a lot of it was like, how can I involve people? Sure. And it was like Roller Coaster Tycoon. I can rename guests to people that follow. You know, so it was always yeah. like, how can I give back? That's always been my focus. Yeah, my interest always is like, what do you think from from the other end, the audience end of like people watching streamers? What do you think? What do you think they like about it? You know, I do you watch streamers. Yeah. Yeah. I do. It's cool because like I watch I ha I follow people that like I like, but mm. I also follow people that I can if I'm just alone and just want to watch something, like yeah. I have people that are also just really good that I can just yeah. not listen to but just watch. So like I I'm very into like the professional World of Warcraft scene. Yeah. I like watching the arena tournaments. I like watching now they you know, have Bashira? like mythic. Yeah. Like yeah, they said, have like yeah. mythic dungeon invitations yeah. now. So like I like watching that, but I'm not going to listen to them because they're just screaming into their microphones about to the group. So yeah. like, I'm not really, but I also follow people cause they're just good people. Yeah. And I feel, does it feel more personal to you? Is that why you watch it? Like, cause it's like yeah. a whole thing rather than a cut down like YouTube video or something that's it's hard. Produced. Like there's a super Mario maker streamer, Carl Sagan mm. 42, who does, he's just a amazing human being personally. Yeah. He's just as a human, he's just awesome. But I would rather watch his YouTube videos than his Twitch stream because it's, YouTube videos, he cuts out all of the deaths and all of like the downtime, right? Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, this yeah. perfect stream on YouTube, but yeah. on Twitch, I'm just like, just get to the part where you win the level already. <laughs> yeah. Like, gosh darn it. Yeah, what are you doing, man? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> that's the answer, man. Yeah, but I feel like that's a, that's a, that's a huge amount of pressure, yeah. you know, because you got to right. be on it all the time, you know, for three hours or however well, long you're And it was streaming. really cool. He, uh, he actually came to my stream once I was playing one of his levels mm. and I, it was such, I'm like, again, I'm moderately good at things. So yeah, like yeah, I yeah. made it happen and I won, but he actually, he didn't just come in and then leave. He stayed until I wow. beat the level and it was, he was there probably a good hour. That's, and I was just like, that's, that's, nice. that's respect, you know, yeah. cause he's a busy guy. Even then he was still a very popular streamer and for him to take the time out to just, you know, I was struggling on like you bounced a shell off a wall and then you could jump off of it to get yeah, to yeah. a higher point. And he was like, all right, you're 
too far away. Okay, well, now you're too... Like, he was helping guide me without <laughs> like, telling me the straight yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah. It was like he was teaching me how yeah. to do it. And I was like, this is... Thank you. Yeah. And I was fine and well before that, but that really sealed the deal for me. Is Carl Sagan like an astronomer or something? Yes. Yeah. But he, because the... I don't know what his real name is, but mm. he's a fan of Carl Sagan. Oh, okay. And he's also a... Act, like, his job is in... He does, like, s- cell work, and he, like... Oh. Well, put viruses in cells and see how it, like he's legit like a scientist wow. like it's crazy yeah that is, that's nuts um so yeah you can go catch you streaming i mean you put videos up weekly right on your youtube channel trying to yeah I'm trying to i've got a lot that are halfly edited and halfly okay. shot so but yeah. I, that that's where i need to to put my focus right now now that we have a little bit more time with with work and stuff is just is my personal content being delivered? Sure. Because we do want to focus on that as well. Your personal brand sticks with you forever. Right. Yeah. And is is that a conscious thought of like how you present yourself and stuff all Always. the time? Yep. Yeah. Is, does that stress you out at all? Mm-mm. No. No. Because I feel like a lot of your stuff, a lot of you is on the internet, you know? All of me is probably on the internet, truthfully. <laughs> you can find like, it somewhere. Yeah. Um, like I keep a very professional space on the internet. Like I'll swear in person. I'm not yeah. afraid to, but like on my social media channels, I'll never swear. Like mm. I'll, I will on stream occasionally, but nothing like intense, but right. like my Twitter, Instagram, never. Right. Cause I just want it to be a place that anybody can come to. Yeah. It's never about anything. It's never too aggressive, too full of any emotion. It's just, let's just go. Let's just live yeah. life. Yeah. I don't ever feel like I need to swear. Either. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's like, uh, so I do improv and stuff and, um, we were always brought up like not to go blue or like do yeah. that kind of stuff. Cause it's like a crutch, you know, right. it's not, it's not necessarily making anything better. It just, uh, it just, it, if you say it quick enough, you know, it'll get like some sort of split yeah. reaction, but like, who cares, yeah. you know, just be funny without it. Mm-hmm. It's harder. Um, so yeah, like make sure you follow, follow you on all the, all that. Um, you are a regular on, on social media and you do post, a lot, a lot of really cool stuff. Yeah, thank um, you. So, yeah, I mean, like, your Instagram account, what is that, like, 16,000 or something? 17,7, I think, last I checked. Wow. Somewhere around there. That's crazy. Yeah. Has that been, like, consistent since you had it, or did it, Yeah, like, so, really... again, you know, that pivoted with me. I started yeah. in college and deleted a lot of old photos, but, mm-hmm. like, it was just, you know, what typically would be, like, uh, I'm just going to post photos and my five friends are going to like it, and then I'm going to just sure. hover at 300 my whole life. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. then I was like... No, I can brand this. And as yeah. I streamed, as I made YouTube videos, I'm like, I'm just going to brand this to me, but what I do. Yeah. So it's not just my content. It's not just me. It's how am I doing this? Showing, mm. Taking people through this story. Yeah. And, and you can s- scroll back and, okay, he was here then or yeah. was with his fiance then. And you, know, you can see the entire journey of our relationship. You can see the entire journey of the business. You can see there's three different stories going on there through my Instagram feed alone. So it's, it's cool to show people that. Yeah. Is there people that don't know you necessarily, but like they come up to you and like talk to you as if they know you based on very often. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't say very often. Definitely. I'm, I'm the least, I'm the person that gets recognized the least around about as a company. Cause like I'm from Port Washington. Yeah. I don't really have that presence anywhere else, but, um, definitely like that will happen. Or even I find it cool, like people that followed my Instagram because I was a Twitch streamer and yeah. I had a photography and all that esports stuff. And now I own a business and now I've got people that are interested in me because of the entrepreneurial journey. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. it's kind of cool to see the people that were following me for one go to the other and vice versa. So it's yeah. it's a cool mix now. I've got like people that are clients of ours that will come and watch me and talk smack to yeah. me on my Twitch stream. But then, you know, I'll be like, yo, your video will be up on the drive in about an hour. Yeah. Any revisions? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, cool yeah. to have that. Yeah, that is, that is really cool. There's a car beeping outside. Yeah, Did you hear that? absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but thanks, man. I mean, I appreciate it. It's, uh, it's been fun talking to you and, and getting to know you a little bit more. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah.